For more insight on developments in Thai politics, I speak with Kevin Hewison. He's the Weldon E. Thornton Distinguished Professor of Asian Studies at the University of Carolina at Chapel Hill, and he joins us this morning from Perth. Uh, Professor, Move Forward Party and the first runner-up for Thai have agreed to nominate a senior member of their coalition as the next Speaker of the House of Representatives. What are your thoughts on Wan Muhammad Nurmata? Well, I think the decision to go with uh, Wan Muhammad Noor is, is a good one. It's a compromise. It's definitely a compromise because the two parties, Puatai and Move Forward, have been unable to agree on the uh, position of Speaker. And as your report pointed out, the Speaker's position is incredibly important. Uh, one, one Muhammad has done it before. Uh, he was a member of Puatai for a number of years. And before that was a House Speaker. He's respected uh, by a wide range of people. And recently, in a meeting of the coalition's uh, parties, he spoke strongly for democratic reform. And this, I think, uh, endeared him to a lot of Move Forward Party supporters as well. So he comes into the job with plenty of support. And I'm pretty sure that the vote is going to be for him in this uh, meeting today. Mm. The professor earlier last week, and Mr. Peter said that he has enough support in the Senate to become the country's next premier. Uh, does this latest resolution or the compromise, as you call it, of House Speaker issue uh, improve his chances becoming the next prime minister? It may do because um, it's the speaker who sets the agenda for which pieces of legislation in which debates come on. Uh, and that may appease some senators who are concerned about the uh, Move Forwards Party agenda, particularly on uh, Article 112 of the Laissez Majesty Law, which they want to reform, to change. And if uh, one Muhammad is, uh, decides and other parties in the coalition decide that this shouldn't go forward, and he can do that in that position, then it may, may suggest to some senators that they could support Peter for prime minister. But his path is still very difficult. And what role do you see the military playing following their resounding defeat in the last election? Well, one of the things that uh, the coalition parties agreed to apparently yesterday is to continue with some issues of military reform. And I think this is going to worry uh, the military who have a reshuffle of leadership, a uh, change of leadership coming up in the next few months. So the military uh, has been reasonably quiet publicly, but they will have been watching these events very closely. And it's become clear that one of the things they're concerned about is uh, demonstrations or protests if Peter's uh, path to the prime ministership is blocked and they're preparing uh, security measures to cope with that. And we know from the past that such kinds of um, disruption give the military a way back into politics and a public way back into politics, not necessarily through a coup, but it gives them um, a reason and a, a, a cause to speak about politics. So we, we need to look over the next few days as to how this plays out. Um, Professor, you earlier mentioned difficult path ahead for Mr. Pita, and indeed he is also facing potential disqualification as an MP for holding shares in a media company, which is prohibited under electoral laws. Would he be able to beat this complaint against him? And if he is to be disqualified, would Po Tai take the lead in the same coalition? Yes, it's um, it's very difficult to predict uh, what will happen with that particular case. And there are a number of other cases being brought against him as well. There are several investigations going on. The old guard in Thailand clearly doesn't want him. And one way or another, they want to get rid of him. Predict this... This case, this particular case is likely to go to the Constitutional Court and the Constitutional Court in the past has been uh, very outspoken on dealing with people it sees as uh, opposing the notion of democracy with the king as head of state. 
So it's quite possible that they would find against him, but it's impossible to predict. And the sequence of events then, uh, would that be likely to happen if he was chosen to be prime minister before that? Uh, it's, I think it's unlikely that the decision will be made by the Constitutional Court if it goes to the Constitutional Court. It's the Election Commission that has to decide to send it to the Constitutional Court, and that process can take from a few days to a few weeks to a few months. So it's, it's again, unpredictable what might happen. But it is possible that he, if he becomes Prime Minister, that he could then be disqualified afterwards. Um, if he's rejected as uh, Prime Minister in this upcoming uh, vote, which is likely to take place shortly, um, it's possible then, uh, because he's the only nominee from the Move Forward Party, for Puatai to put up a candidate through the House to the uh, full meeting of the Senate and the House. And a Puatai um, Prime Minister may be, ironically, because it's seen as a pro Thaksin party, may be more acceptable than move forward to the Senators. And we'll have to watch it closely as today unfolds, as we will do right here on CNA. Thank you for your time this morning, Professor. That's Professor Kevin Hewison from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill.